Hello again. This is Math 2134 coming to you from the College of DuPage. The title of this lecture is Integration by Parts, and I encourage you to be an active learner during this video. The product rule leads to a useful technique for solving certain integrals. This technique is called integration by parts, and it's used in situations where the integrand is a product of two or more factors and where techniques like substitution will not work. Let y equal u of x and uh, y equal v of x be two functions. If we apply the product rule, we know that the derivative of uv is u v prime plus v u prime. Now, if we integrate both sides of this equation, we will have this expression. And here we're doing the sum of the integrals is the integral of the sum. And so we can abbreviate this expression in um, uh, this way, because when you integrate the derivative of uv, you get uv, so you have this, and if you solve for the integral of u dv, this one, you'll get the formula for integration by parts. So this is the thing you want to memorize. The integral of u dv, notice they don't match, is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Let's do some examples. Here we want to evaluate the indefinite integral of x e to the x dx. Now magic doesn't happen with a simple substitution here, but we will do a double substitution. So we will let u equal x, and we will let dv equal e to the x dx. Now notice here, in order to use the formula, I'm going to have to take the differential of u. So du is equal to dx. But here, on this side, I have to know what v is to complete the formula. And so what I'm going to do is integrate both sides. So if dv is equal to e to the x dx, then v is e to the x plus c. And the c can always be taken to z be 0 uh, when you're doing integration by parts. So again, when we integrate both sides of this, we get v is equal to e to the x. And now we'll use the formula because you see this is the integral of what we called u and what we called dv. So this is equal to u v u v minus the integral of v and then that is um, du. But now this integral, then the one we wanted to compute, this is just x e to the x and when we integrate this, we get e to the x plus c. And we can check by differentiating the results. Now, that probably seemed complicated. And integration by parts, like substitution, can be a trial and error process. In the preceding example, if we reverse the roles, uh, you would see that things just get worse instead of better. And so that would not have worked. So you do have to be careful, and you're basically doing a double substitution and then some additional work. Let's do another example. Here we're evaluating the indefinite integral of x, ln x, dx, and we're forcing x to be greater than 0, so the ln x does make sense. In this case, we can solve the problem by letting u equal the natural logarithm of x. Now if u is the natural logarithm of x, then du is equal to 1 over x dx. And everything else has to be dv, so dv is x dx. So we integrate this to find out what v is, and we'll get that v is x squared over 2. Again, the constant is 0. So now we're using the integration by parts formula, so the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. 
Now when you do this calculation here, you realize that that will simplify to, we'll pull the one half in front of the integral and it's just is left with x. So now you see this is going to be x squared over 2 ln x minus, and I complete this integral, this is minus x squared over 4 plus c, and you see that when we check this by using the derivative, we do see that this is a true formula. Here's another one. We're to evaluate the indefinite integral of x times the square root of 5x plus 1 dx. Now, in this case, we're going to let u equal x, and everything else has to be dv. So dv is 5x plus 1 whole to the 1 half dx. So then I can compute du is dx, and I have to integrate this. Now, this is an integration by substitution. We're going to let w equal 5x plus 1. That means that dw is equal to 5dx. So we take v to be this integral with this substitution. I add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, simplify, and I get this. And then I reverse the substitution. So it's 2 over 15. 5x plus 1 whole to the 3 halves. So putting it all together then, the integral that we wanted, u dv, is u times v minus the integral of v du. Now we have to integrate this again. Pull out the constants, and this is going to be this raised to the 5 halves divided by 5 halves, and you simplify it, and this is the answer that you get at the end of the problem. Make sure that you can replicate these calculations. Here's another problem. We're to evaluate the indefinite integral of the natural logarithm of x dx, and again we're assuming x is greater than 0, so ln of x makes sense. So, in this case, uh, the way to proceed is we're going to let u equal ln x, and everything else, namely uh, dx, has to be dv. So this is going to be the derivative of u is 1 over x dx. And we integrate both sides, we get v is equal to x. Again, the constant is 0. So the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral, indefinite integral, of v du. Now notice that x times 1 over x is 1, so I'm just integrating dx, and that's going to be minus x. This is our final answer. And note the constant of integration has to be there. Okay, so now let's summarize some tips that we've seen. We use integration by parts when other techniques are not effective, and we can write the integral in the form integral of f of x, g of x, dx. And then we consider writing the integral in the form, the integral of u dv. We choose one factor to be u, and the remaining factor has to be dv. And we do have to know that we know how to find the indefinite integral of whatever this g of x is dx. So then you find du by differentiating what we let u be, and we find v by integrating. Now, if the resulting integral is more difficult to solve than the original one, it probably wasn't a good idea to uh, go down this path. And when you do get an answer, you can always check by taking the derivative. Here's another example, and this one is different because this is a definite integral. Our answer isn't going to be a family of functions. It's going to be a number. So we have to find the antiderivative. Now that is something we've done before. This does involve integration by parts. And notice that the way this works is the integral of u dv then is equal to u v minus the integral of v du. We already did this on the previous example. You may want to check back. But now we evaluate this at the top limit and the bottom limit. There's the top limit minus. There's the whole of the bottom limit. We simplify the calculation and we get the exact answer is 2 natural logarithm of 2 minus 1.
and if we use a calculator that is approximately equal to 0 0.386 and that is the approximate area that's shown here because that was a definite integral. Uh, life is a word problem and we certainly can use this for word problems. Uh, the rate of change in a population uh, of bacteria T after, after an antibiotic treatment begins is estimated by and you see this is a rate of change so this is P prime and that is T e to the minus 0 0.04 T and uh, so that's going to start out growing but then it's going to dip okay uh, find uh, the population of the bacteria after 24 hours of treatment and what is the total change in the population from 24 to 36? Well, to find P of T, we integrate P prime. And when we integrate P prime, if we look at P prime, we see that that is T and that is E to the minus 0.04 T. So we have to let U equal T and dv is everything else so it's e to the minus 0 0.04 t dt so du is dt and v is this so here's the integration by parts formula a minus times a minus is going to be a plus and when we integrate this we get this make sure you follow all these calculations and this is then what is p of t but we can find c because we know that P at time zero is 1500, uh, where that really uh, is, 100, is 1500,000 because of the units in the problem. So we can substitute in the values 0 for T and 1500 for uh, P of T. And we could solve C as this. So that means the population is this. Remember, this is a, an initial value problem and one of the kinds of problems that we uh, have already discussed. Now in part um, oh, this, and we wanted to find this after 24 hours of treatment in part A so substitute 24 in there and use a calculator to get this answer. And that tells us how many bacteria are present 24 hours after the treatment. Now here in part B we're asking what is the total change in the population of bacteria from 24 to 36 hours? Well, we're integrating from 24 to 36, and in here, this is going to be P prime of T. We plug in the numbers, we find out that this is the answer, and that represents this area. <clears throat> in some cases, we may need to apply integration by parts more than once. For example, here, in example 7, we're evaluating the definite integral from 0 to 7, x squared, and then this is e to the minus x, dx, to find the shaded area over here. Again, we're integrating from 0 to 7. Well, when you first start, you'll let u equal x squared, and dv is everything else. And you integrate this to get this for v, and you take the derivative here to get this for u. So the integral of u dv is u times v minus the integral of v du. We compute this integral, but we can't because this one is fine, but this has 2, and this is x e to the minus x. So I'm going to have to use integration by parts again to compute this. So I'm going to remember I still have this, but here I'm going to let u to do this one, I'm going to let u be 2x. And that means du is 2dx. And everything else that's left, the e to the minus x dx is dv. And I integrate that, and I get v is equal to this. So using the integration by parts formula, again, we get the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Now this integral now is one that we can compute. We pull out the minus 2, and we could have made it minus a minus 2, but whenever we do this calculation, we will get as our answer 
This is equal to minus 2x e to the minus x minus 2 e to the minus x plus c. Now that was just this part, and so we are going to substitute this answer for this part, getting this. And we note that we can factor an e to the minus x out of the first uh, three terms plus c. So that is the answer to the antiderivative. But now we're going to evaluate this at 0 and c, so we evaluate this at 7 minus, we evaluate it at 0. Notice we subtract out the whole of the integrand being evaluated at 0. This is the exact answer, minus 65 e to the minus 7 plus 2. And if we use a calculator, that is approximately 1.94. In situations similar to example uh, 7, we might have an integrand that looks like this, an integral, f of x, g of x, for which f of x is a polynomial that can be easily differentiated repeatedly, leading to a higher order derivative um, uh, that eventually will become 0. So, what we're, and so here's an example, and this is one we did before, actually. So this is the inter indefinite integral of x squared e to the minus x. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called tabular integration. So we create a table, that's why we call it tabular, with two columns. One is for f of x and its derivatives, and the other is for g of x and its antiderivatives. So you see this follows a quickly understood pattern. x squared, 2x, 2, and 0. That means I'm finished. And this one starts out with e to the minus x. This is the first integral. That's the second integral. That's the third integral. Then we draw an arrow from the first entry in the first column diagonally to the second one, and we alternate signs, plus, minus, plus, minus, and so on. But once you hit zero, you know you're finished. And so this is going to be x squared e to the minus x minus 2x e to the minus x plus 2 e to the minus x. And we know we can factor out the e to the minus x, and you see we get the same answer that we had before. And here's our summary of the section. So we have a brand new formula that allows us to integrate many more things. So the integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. This is to be committed to memory. It's not always easy to do this. The choices for u and dv should be such that the indefinite integral of v du is simpler than the original integral. And if this doesn't happen, you probably want to try a different choice. And tabular integration can be used when repeated integration by parts is necessary. Now, more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now, more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. May God bless you all.